Hey, this video is actually a screencast of a podcast interview I did for the Nonprofit Ally podcast. So if you like this, you can go ahead and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. That link is below in the description notes below this video. I hope you enjoy this. <music> Hey folks, this is Steve with Nonprofit Ally, and I have on the Skype video line, it's Carlos Scapero. He is actually coming from us from, uh, I want to say, I know it's Ohio, I, I want to assume Dayton. Are you in Dayton? Yeah, I am in Dayton, yes. Okay, that came up on the Skype thing. Um, your location comes up on there. Anyways, let me finish this intro. He's a graduate from Auburn University, and he has a degree in international business. He runs Mr. Leeds, which is at mr-leads.com. He is a networking professional, both online and offline, and he specializes in email marketing and email marketing campaigns. Um, Carlos, thanks so much for, for being on the program. Oh, thanks for inviting me. I appreciate it. Oh, this is great. Um, this fits in really well with a few podcasts we've recently done on email marketing. We've done some funnels. We've done some sales stuff. And what I really like about this and, and the, us getting in touch is just like how email can improve communications and networking, right? I think sometimes people just use it as a tool like, hey, I'm going to be there at 12. And, and But but like networking with the, your followers and building your followers can be done through email. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Excellent. Look forward to talking to Sherry. All right. So um, one of the things that I see on your website, right, and it's, it's an article that when we were first emailing through our own networking, you talked about um, connected, building event participation or using email marketing to uh, market your event. I think we're going to start right in with is on that, right in on nonprofits who are holding an event. It's a fundraiser. It's a, a dinner. It's uh, their annual could be their annual meeting, right? They need more participants, and that's always a problem for some people. Um, sure. Let's just walk through the process of uh, of doing marketing for an event and the different pieces, including email, that are involved in that. Kind of give us the the base, um, the, the the startup, the base base things we need in place to start that marketing. Sure. Uh, the biggest mistake I see in the nonprofit marketing is oftentimes they just don't market aggressively enough. They will send one email campaign or one postcard and think that that's all they need. I've been doing event marketing for several years, starting at least a good five years ago with Toastmasters. And the process I've found that really works well is to do one email about a month or two out. Um, it was basically just a general email, hey, save the date type of thing. And then one a week before and then one a day before. And that really gets all the different personality types involved because some people – like to really, really know well in advance when the event's coming up. Some people want just a reminder and some people want to know. Some people don't think of anything until the last minute. Oh, yeah, there's an event coming up this week. And so that really hits all the different personality types. And I found that that really maximizes the attendance. Mm -hmm. And outside of email, are there other forms of marketing that should be coupled with this? Absolutely. I mean, all kinds of different things. Social media, put posts on Facebook, put posts on Twitter, put posts on Instagram, Pinterest, anywhere and everywhere that people might congregate. And that really varies on the type of um, person you're looking to have come to your event, whether it's a younger person or an older person. You need to understand your demographics and understand who who that ideal prospect is that's going to come to your event. Sometimes postcards can work well, too, as, as a reminder mm -hmm. on top of all that. Um, the good thing about postcard marketing is you know, the rules are a little bit different from email marketing. With email marketing, you have to... Um, no like and trust the person that you're emailing. You know, there's all kind of can't spam rules, but with postcards, you can send it to anybody. So oftentimes it's more of a cold lead. Um, postcards can be a good way to get that initial contact out there. So, you know, I definitely want to don't discount direct mail. So a lot of online marketers want to say, oh, direct mail's dead, all that kind of stuff. And I say, no, you know, they work together. You know, the good, good marketers know that, you know, send some things offline, some things online, use them together to promote your event. Right. Yeah. Especially if you're in small communities, I find that uh, I used to live in a very small community of 2000 people. We could direct mail everyone in the town for like 500 bucks. And oh, wow. It, it was really nice because um, it, it was uh, everyone. It's such a small town that everyone knew the nonprofit because there's only a handful of us there. So was re direct mail really helped us. And that was actually at that time better than our emailing marketing. But now 
now I'm in a bigger town. E- emailing is the best way to get it, get people in there. Now, now you talked right. about um, cold leads, right? So there's a, a marketing term for sure. Can you explain what a cold lead is and how it differs from wh- why someone on an email list wouldn't be a cold lead? Sure. Um, so what I would consider a warm lead is someone who knows, likes, and trusts you. So maybe who, someone who attended the event before, who went to your website and signed up for your email list and gave you permission that says, yes, I want to know about your nonprofit. I want to be on your list and please let me know that you have events coming up. So they give you permission. Um, in the U.S., we have something called the Can Spam Act. I don't know if you have listeners overseas. In Canada, I think it's called the CASL Act, where basically these laws say you cannot send emails without permission. So it's pretty easy to get that permission. Really just ask either at your event or you know, as you meet people and say, hey, do you want to be on our email list? Give them you know, maybe a, a clipboard or something that says, hey, um, you've given permission to be on my email list, but you can't just buy a list from somebody and you know, willy-nilly email people. You know, for those things that are purchased, you know, maybe you have a don- potential donor list of wealthy people you know, for that type of thing, you definitely need to do postcards or direct mail for that first campaign to get them in the door. Once they've attended the event, you can say, hey, you know, would you like to attend future events? And you can use email to do those follow-up emails, okay. either for donations or to attend future events. Okay, so so we're, now we're talking about different types of um, emails going out. But build, let, let's talk a little bit about building that list. And I've talked about this in the past, but I think this is one of the hardest things for people is – well, we have our members on there. So how are we building that list? And um, you're talking about that opt-in. Maybe later we'll go into this because that's important when you when you start using an application like AWeber or MailChimp or Constant Contact, and you start adding people to that list. You need right. to there's a there's a place there that tells tells you as the person adding someone to the list, you need to make a checkbox like this person gave me permission. Like you are actually physically telling constant contact that you have permission to add this person to your list. So, so that's important. Um, oh, okay. So, so let's talk about, let, let's get this list built because now let's say we have an event coming up in a couple months and we're, mm-hmm. we plan on, Hey, this email marketing sounds like it might be worth trying. Let's get people on this list. What are ways to get people on that list? A lot of different ways. First way is at the event, either at your registration desk, you can have, maybe like a clipboard or something like that. I've been to a few church concerts lately and a really interesting one I've seen lately is something called text to join where basically you have a, a number um, that basically the person takes their smartphone and texts something to a number. Constant contact, MailChimp, active campaign, most of the big providers these days have a text to join feature and you get basically a, a phone number that you would send a text to and then you'll get a text reply back. And then when you get that reply, you enter your email address and it adds up to the email list. And so if you have a bigger event where, you know, like concerts and those types of activities, you know, that's a really great way to do it. Um, I've seen those where they'll just fly something on the screen and say, hey, would you like our email updates? And sometimes they'll even couple it with a contest and says, you know, hey, if you sign up for our email updates, you know, we're going to give away a door prize. That type of thing that works well. Um, or a lot of the software tools inside of, the actual registration page so you can add a button that says hey would you like to get our email updates click check this box and you get permission that way as well right. so yeah. it really it depends on the type of event and how you're doing registration and all those right. things so then you're talking then about um doing it online um like having yeah, you your email online. button online yeah on, on your sign up form so if you're doing online registration using constant contact or using um eventbrite there's buttons you can add in there that say, yes, I've given permission. And oftentimes, depending on which software tools you're using, that will even automatically sync it up and automatically do it for you. Worst case, it automatically do it. You can always download your list and then re-upload it, which is a pretty simple process. Okay. All right. Um, so, so prior to the event, you have this list that you're building. You send out that first email um, about a month in advance, you said? Yeah, a month or two in advance, usually about a month, but it, it depends. I mean, if it's a really big event, you might want to go even further out. So it, it depends if it's if it's a conference where people are traveling, you might want to give even more notice. But, you know, if it's you know, your simple lunch and learn on Friday afternoon, a month's notice is fine. 
Okay. Okay. Let's um, let's go for big. Let's say we're doing our annual fundraiser. Uh, I think people. Yeah, they, we, we put some time and effort in this. We we uh, reserved a place. We might even be catering it for twenty bucks a plate or something like that, and expecting right. something out of this. Um, so this is an event, and there's lots of digital ways. You just mentioned a couple of them. Um, so outside a list, other ways to uh, to host an event and market it digitally. You just mentioned Eventbrite, which is a uh, an event software that people can use. Can you, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, yeah, so there's different tools. Eventbrite is one of them. Um, the way Eventbrite works is they give you a free account. So for free events, they don't charge anything. And then if it's a paid event, they'll charge a percentage um, basically for credit card processing. I believe with credit cards, it's, I, I want to say it's like 3% for the credit card plus, you know, a 3 to 5% fee to Eventbrite. Um, cost of conduct is a similar tool with cost of conduct tool is more of a subscription basis where basically it's a flat fee uh, 20 bucks a month um, with unlimited events and which I'm a reseller for them so I, I'm a little more familiar with their product mm -hmm. and you know, oftentimes with customers that come to me that are already using a right I'll say well yeah you can use this or use cost of conduct it depends and it depends on, the, on how many events you do and if you do more paid events or free events you know if, if you're doing almost all free events Eventbrite's a great way to go because it's totally free if you're doing all free events. If you're doing more paid events, then you have to look at, okay, are those percentages worth paying or is it better to go with something like cost of contact where it's one fee for the event processing part of it? Right. Um, and then you have to look at what email system you're using and how they like, are compatible. If you're using cost of contact for email, their email, their event products obviously a really good for that because it's all merged together into one account. Um, if you're using MailChimp or something like that, um, I think it merges with Eventbrite. I'm not 100 percent sure because I'm not super familiar with Mailchimp as much as Constant Contact, but I believe it can merge. Um, I use Active Campaign as well, and you know, with that one, you have to do more of a manual process where you download the list and then upload that back in. So all kind of different tools. You just have to look at what you're using, what you'd like to use, right? Um, so, what so, your stats familiar <clears throat> with, all those kind of things. So, so. I want to go back to Eventbrite real quick here because sure. it's a way to have, if you're having a paid event, let's say it's a $20 fundraising for your ticket and they're going to have a um, an art show or just a band there or whatever, right? So it's some type of an event and it's, it's a, there's an admission fee or it could right. be free, I guess. Um, so it, it, we'll, we'll use Eventbrite as an example of, it's it's almost a calendar, isn't it? Like I could have an event and put a date on there and have all the information. And actually, I think Eventbrite makes a, a page for that, like a landing page. So some people can do I this do. within WordPress yeah. with, a, with a plugin from WordPress. There's definitely event calendars you can do this with. And then you can actually have a Buy Now button. I want to say, um, right. I think it's just called Event Calendar. It's a plugin um, right. for WordPress. But but um, Eventbrite does it, and it would work if, if you have WordPress or not. And they include, if it is a paid service, they include that that payment gateway. So in other words, someone could pay something, they do the credit card processing, they take their 5% or whatever, and then you get the rest and they have this, it's actually a pretty seamless experience from from what I've been told, Eventbrite yeah. at least is, that you get your ticket, you get a receipt, and you might even be able to print it. Um, kind of all through Yeah, then. and you can, you can even get a QR code where you can scan it at the door. So the attendee doesn't have to bring the ticket if they bring their phone, they can just hand it to you to scan oh, it too. Yeah, they put it right so. on the phone. So both the Eventbrite product and Constant Contacts product, they both work in terms of functionality. It's 99% similar, where basically you have a landing page, you enter your information, and then everything else is all taken care of from credit card processing to the gateway to the whole thing. It just depends you know, if you want to use PayPal or use their internal processing. I believe Eventbrite has their own processor. Right. And then Constant Contacts goes through, oh, what is it? WePay, I believe it's called. Um, but can. they all work the same. So basically you go, you enter your checking account information, and then you stick it all in there, and then you have your event. Mm -hmm. You're good to go. Um, well, the Constant Contacts tool, I know they also will allow you to take checks at the door. You can do a pay at the door option. You can have a mail checks, um, which most people don't do, but they have an option. You know, I had a Toastmasters event where a few of the attendees were kind of older, and they didn't want to, you know, they were, weren't super comfortable with credit cards. So they did the pay at the door option. They'd be like, okay, I'm going to go and sign up online, but I'm actually going to, going to pay when I get there. And those are perfectly fine um, with these tools. But yeah, I mean, both of that brand and Constant Products work almost identically in terms of functionality. It just depends on 
you know, if you want to pay a monthly fee versus paying a percentage of your ticket sales, um, and you have to look at your, you have to look at your um, funding and figure out, okay, which is better based on what I'm doing, what my needs are. Yeah. And depending if you already, if you already have a, a, if your email provider, like Constant Contact or Aweber, has that already, then you might as well just use their service. If not, then Eventbrite is an option. So, so here's the thing right. with that. So you send off your event email, right? You craft mm-hmm. this email, and the idea would then be to take. You can embed the the um, the buy now, order now, or would it sign. Come to this event little button right there in the email, and it sends them to that page. Yeah, so you create a link that um, would go. So basically, you create that in, you create that landing page that basically has all your information. And then in those tools, you, there's basically a share button where you can share it on social media um, to basically direct link to have people sign up for the event. Um, you can go on Facebook and create a Facebook event. And then in Facebook, there's a, a bottom, a thing at the bottom that says like more information or sign up. I don't remember what it's called, buy now or something. Um, and you can put your link there uh, that goes to your landing page. And then when you go into Constant Contact or AWeber or Active Campaign, whatever you're using, um, you just put in a link with your button and then um, there's a little box that says click on a link and then you drop the link for that landing page in there. Uh, yes. And then as soon as the person signs in, they get the email and um, they click on the link, it goes right to that landing page that has more information. Um, so oftentimes what I'll do is in the email, maybe the teaser won't have every single thing about the event. Uh, maybe it's a paragraph or two, but then when you get to the landing page, okay, I'm going to give you the full information. Here's the agenda. Here's where it is. Here's a and here's a lot more details about what's coming up and why you should sign up for it. And right. then boom, hit the payment button at the end. Yeah, I think that might get you more um, conversions, right? So click through rate. Right. Your click through rate, the uh, the people who open it and actually click that. I think a good right. short and sweet email of, hey, this event's coming up. It's going to be great. Here's we have this person right. there. Here's two bullet points. Uh, learn more now, and get them exactly. to that landing page, right? Um, right. That first email is really just selling. You're selling the click. You're selling them to request more information and then at the landing page you're selling okay here's what you need to become here's what's going to be amazing here's what you're going to learn all that stuff yeah because if they're not interested they're not going to click and if you give them a big long email they're definitely not (laughs) going to want to read that whole thing um right i like how you mentioned that that you can do this because that's the cool thing you can do this with your social media too so you can take your landing page wherever your event sign up is and right. you put that in Facebook, and there's applications for that, I assume? Yeah, um, inside the software, there's actually a direct link to share with Facebook. Um, or you can you know, put it in Buffer. You know, if you're using Buffer or Hootsuite or anything like that, um, you can just drop the link right in there or, and schedule them, and you can do mul- schedule multiple emails. Um, mm-hmm. And you know, usually three to five emails, three to five um, social media posts are always good for promoting an event as well. Mm-hmm. Especially doing like Twitter or something like that, where you know, some people are on Twitter eight in the morning, some people ten in the evening, and, and Twitter posts. Uh, you know, they're only good for five minutes, basically. You know, they're up and done. So you got to do five to six out of those if you're doing Twitter. Yeah, that's a good Facebook, point. not quite as much, but yeah, yeah, that's a good point though. Like, especially Twitter because it, it's just so quickly gone. Um, right. Don't be afraid to repeat tweets. Maybe adjust the lingo a little bit, but repeat the the message. Right. Know, five times. Maybe Oh, absolutely. Using a scheduling tool. Yeah, you don't have to say the exact same message. So, you know, use a scheduling tool like Buffer. You don't have to log in and use something like Buffer, which is free for up to, I think, 10 tweets at a time. So drop it in there, put the image in there. Um, that makes it look nice and pretty and then uh, roll with it. Okay. Facebook ads can work well, too. You know, create a Facebook ad and have that link to that landing page. And just like everything else, you know, and Facebook ads are good because, you know, it, it's a nice, it's another alternative to direct mail for those people that are on your email list that you want to invite. So you, maybe you know that people that live within 10 miles of that event who make between 150 and 300,000 a year who are into symphonies and blah, 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 are your ideal target. So then you create a Facebook ad and you start targeting in the audience inside of Facebook to um, get that ideal audience. Right. Um, right. Facebook also has um, what's called lookalike audiences. So the other alternative is to take your just email list, dump that into Facebook, and create what's called a lookalike audience. That okay, we know these these types of people are our donors. We're not 100 percent sure what those demographics are, but Facebook tell us, you know, find me 10,000 people who like the people that just donated to us. 
yeah, you because know, you know that if they have similar interests and um, income levels and education levels, then they're probably going to donate again. Okay, so so we know this big event's coming, right? So we have our big fundraiser, and we're going to charge a little money. And we we let's say we, let's say we use our constant contact event planning software or whatever. We have a landing page, right? Um, sure. How much are we planning ahead of time? What's the plan here? Are we pre-writing some of this stuff? And because you use a campaign type management system for for a lot of the stuff you're doing, so are we pre-writing some of the stuff and putting it on a schedule? What's that schedule look like? What what fits into this? Um, you basically have a strategic plan for the event. Yeah, I mean you have to plan it in advance. Yeah, you know, make sure that, just like anything else, it's like you have to plan. Okay, we're gonna you know get this room, get this space. And the bigger the event, the longer the plan. Um, and you had to figure out, okay, how much your ticket's going to be. Another thing I've done, especially with my Toastmasters events, is we've done basically tiered pricing, where basically if you get, if you sign up maybe three months in advance, you get this rate. If you sign up a month in advance, you get this rate. If you sign up the day of the, of the event, you get this rate. And, and you're rewarding people for taking action early. And, and those are great um, points for those emails, because you know I've noticed that typically people will buy right before some date happens because most people wait to the last second but you know people know well i know i'm coming and if i buy it today it's 95 bucks but i wait till tomorrow it's 150 okay i'm gonna have to save the 50 bucks and buy right now those types of things work pretty well where you can um, and those can also be great deadlines for those emails in your campaign and but it, it depends you know the bigger the event the longer it is you know the more you have people flying in you know is it you know, if it's just an hour or two, it's one thing, but if you have people making that commitment to take a week off work and fly in, I mean, it might be up to a year in advance. It really, it really depends on mm -hmm. the scheduling and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, you can't really even do too early. I mean, it can be just a, something that says, hey, we booked the hotel today. You know, save the date. It's going to be eight months out, but mm -hmm. here's the date, here's the time, here's the hotel. More info later, and you're building that curiosity, and then maybe you, you schedule the keynote speaker. Oh my God! You won't believe who we just booked. Our keynote right. speaker is going to be blah 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 blah. Yeah. Make but, sure to save the date. It's going to be amazing. And then three days later, oh by the way, you know we need some guest speakers. Would you like to be a, a guest speaker at our event? You know, here's the process to become a uh, breakout speaker. Right. Here's a link to that application. And then you know two weeks later, hey by the way, a breakout speaker has been chosen. Here's the agenda. Da, 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 da. And and really, you're reminding them. But you know, as long as you're reminding them definitely each time as you get closer to the event, it's fine. Um, it's where people you know, send the same thing over and over and over and they get bored. But if you're sending something different each time, you have a reason. You know, I have a reason now. You know, those deadlines today, you really want to know. And people are thankful. Oh, thanks for letting me know the deadline's coming up. There's nothing worse than going past the deadline. And then they're like, well, why didn't you tell me? Oh, I didn't know the deadline was Friday. I thought it was next week. And right. then they're mad. At you. Yeah, much better to you're doing them a favor. Hey, the deadline is tonight. You've got to sign up today or you're going to be paying double. You're going to be paying whatever that new fee is. And, that, and those are great ways to add things in there. Right. I, I like the idea of um, you're, you're kind of building buzz, right? Hey, this you're just happened. Exactly. We just signed our, our this just happened. Exactly. Here's the keynote. And, you just, and you, that's a good use of social media too. And so oh, now absolutely. you can use different ways of outreaching. Um, and you can tag them on social media. And, you know, if it's a big keynote, then you know, go tag them on Twitter, tag them on Facebook, yeah, and say, hey, you know, this guy's common. And then um, if you want to use it, um, Facebook ads, then okay, maybe target that guy's people that are fans of this certain person. You know, but something's open to the public that you know, do you know Joe so and so is coming to town? And you know, they're already fans of his. They live in that city. You guarantee, you know, you got a pretty good chance they're going to show up because, yeah. oh my gosh, this guy never comes to our town. All of a sudden he's here and it's only this much money. We got to go see him, you know, yeah. that type of thing. Yeah. Uh, let's go a little bit more into that, that tagging part because I think people forget this sometimes is that mm -hmm. if you're trying to bring in a bigger audience, not just your members, if it's a member meeting and only members can show up, then, right. then you have a limited audience, email them. But if you're trying to bring in the community in general, and you have a uh, a guest speaker or a keynote speaker of some notoriety or at least some name recognition. Uh, walk us through that tagging process again and how that works and how it might bring in more people. Yeah, so think and, about- And what is tagging? Let's go back. What is tagging? Sure, so basically tagging is where you um, 
enter the name of someone that's coming to your event. Either it's and typically on Facebook, you have to be connected to them personally. And basically, you just do the at sign and type in their name, and it, it basically tags them. Um, on Twitter, it's really nice because you can tag anybody. And so um, it doesn't matter if it's Donald Trump, doesn't matter if it's whoever. It, you just go in, in Twitter, and you type in your message, and you hit the at sign, and you type in the um, username, and pop, it pops in and goes in there. Um, so basically, what you do is, you know, and then with that, you can also use hashtags. So basically, hashtags is basically a pound sign and a keyword. Right. So you can use hashtags along with tagging. So right. basically, you can say, okay, we've got Joe, this great big speaker. He's coming to town. And and then you can tag him. And most likely, if he's the speaker, he'll see that. And then what's, what's he going to do? Well, he wants people to come to the event, too. It's in his best interest. So most likely, he'll share it also. And you know, he'll, he'll comment on it and reshare it right. and all that kind of good stuff, which – you know, builds even more buzz. Right. Yeah, let me just reiterate too. So for people who don't know, I think most people know this. So maybe I'm just assuming that someone might not yeah. know this, but, but when you tag somebody um, and you put like the at sign in front of their username, then they become aware of that post. Basically it shows up right. in, in their feed or somehow they get notified that someone's tagged you and then you can, that person would likely share it to their audience. And so it's a good way of, um, it reminds me of, I'm going to totally date myself here, but um you remember the old like is was it Breck commercials and they had the woman there washing her hair and then they said yeah oh, no. and I told two friends and then she told two friends and the screen yeah, exactly. replied, and I told two friends. That's kind of what tagging can do. So um it's a good practice to do. Um anytime you put a post in actually, just as a side note, whether it's for an event or um a funder or a grant or tag, whoever it is, you're the subject of your message, especially in social media. And right. let them know, one, that you're sharing the information, and maybe they'll share it and more people will see what you're posting about. Right. A side note story on that, that oftentimes what I do now is I'll tag resources related to my topic and maybe mention certain products. And then I'll tag the owner of that product and say, oh, by the way, I mentioned you in my blog post. You know, hope you don't mind. Of course, everybody's like, oh, gee, thanks. You know, and usually they'll reply back and you know, comment. And, and yeah, it builds more buzz, gets more, more eyeballs on what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. Like for a nonprofit, possibly maybe you tag the person you got a grant from, um, or you oh, absolutely definitely tag like your guest speakers who are coming. You could um, tag a partner, nonprofit, or a, a new sponsor. You could tag right. you, know, you just got sponsored by the local um, hardware store or whatever. Right. Um, and so you're just helping them and, and spreading awareness that way. So it, right. it's a really good, it's a good way. And I find that if I think about tagging. I end up thinking about more ways to use social media. Mm. It's like, oh, there's a, there's a reason to post something because right. they just gave us their donation. I'm going to tag them in that. Right. If it's a donor or a sponsor, I mean, I'll take it a step further and take their photo, you know, mm. either at the event or before the event, you know, get a photo with them. Hey, here's me and the sponsor. Yeah. Thank you so much for Joe's Hardware Store for sponsoring our event. We love it. We're glad you came, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, gives them publicity, and you know, especially you give them a picture of you and them holding the check for fifty grand they just gave you. Um, that type of stuff works great on social media, of course. Then they get the buzz, and people are like, "Oh wow, Joe's Hardware Store! How generous of them! I can't believe they gave you all that money." Mm -hmm. You know, that's amazing, and yeah. it builds that whole cycle of virtue. That yeah, yeah, it's cool. always nice too to put in that post. Like next time you're at Joe's, tell them thank you for us. And oh, absolutely! It, yeah, people do that. People really do that. People love that. Okay, stuff. Yeah. So, so now we got a lot of balls in the air. We're doing social media. We're doing emailing, um, and we're we're putting these all all this kind of together. We're we're sequencing it in some type of um, um, planned every three days or whatever, um, and right. we got a landing page. Um, so those that could be kind of all over the place. Do you you have a tool that you use to kind of keep this in the one or kind of help you manage? this event planning process, this event marketing process? Um, to plan it out, not really. I mean, I use, I, I've used active campaign and constant contact. Uh, I was exclusively constant contact. I was a speaker for them for several years and I use active campaign for some campaigns now and I really just use the tool, put it in the tool and roll with it. Um, I'm not as super organized. Some people will you know, write it all out on a sheet of paper, use a spreadsheet, Excel, that kind of thing, but I just roll with it. I don't um, get as, as, Organize as some people should. Right. Some so, people do. Yeah. And what's Active Campaign do for you? Um, Active Campaign is a competitor, constant contact, and MailChimp, and, and those other tools. Um, it's just 
So it's another tool set out there. I like it because it allows a little more segmentation. Um, I've been with them for six months or so. Mm-hmm. Um, but Casa Connect is good too. I know a lot of people still use that. A lot of people still use MailChimp too. It, it really just depends on your skill set, your, your budget, and what you want to do with the tool. Okay, okay. Um, um, so so now we have this kind of setup. You have some examples of stuff for us you want to share? You maybe said you had a landing page or an event thing there. Um I'm giving you a heads up, you kind of get your screens ready. We're going to share a screen here in a minute. Right. And um, maybe you can walk us through some of this. And as you do that, I will talk, because we're a podcast as well as a video at this point. I can I'll, I can tell people visually or audio, audio-ly what they're, what they're <laughs> listening to visually. Right. That makes sense. Um, so, so yeah. I think the mother account, so yeah, we got it. Um, yeah, we don't the original plan was going to my current account, but then I just realized most of my events are actually my old account, so I have to go log in my other account. So, okay, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. We can keep talking while you're yeah, getting got, logged in. Um, so there's, we've mentioned a few different applications. We mentioned the, the campaign, the Constant Contact, AWeber, uh, MailChimp. These are all the mailing applications that people have heard over and over in the podcast. And I've just actually just made a switch from um, MailChimp. I had their free one, which was great. And I went to AWeber. Cool. Um, it's just a personal preference. I like their um, their layout and how kind of drop and drag it is, and it's a little. They, right. they, their lingo is a little easier. Um, I got used to Mailchimp after a while, but um, but when I started paying, because eventually you just kind of have to pay for services. Um, and right. the advantages of paying for service are like Mailchimp's free. You can have a list of twenty thousand people, and you can just broadcast. You can send emails to them. But as soon as you want to start scheduling a, um, one, maybe you write it today, but you mail it, email it out um, uh, every Thursday. Or if you want any type of automation uh, of any type, or if you want a sequence, we're going to send three emails two days apart. Then you're going to have to pay for those services. And there's benefits to that. And it's typically 20 bucks a month, might be 30. And it, it the costs go up as you grow your list. Uh, but you can find there's all sorts of statistics in there that can help you. Uh, know if your campaigns are successful, if they're opening those emails that you're sending. And so I found that um, that 20 bucks a month really kind of just allowed me to do things like segmenting, like you mentioned a couple of times already. So uh, so if you're ready, right. we'll go ahead and flip the screens. You, there's a little plus sign on your Skype and you can share your screen. And if for some reason right now, you know, if there's any like something that shows up that's personal information, I can always blur it out since we are pre-recorded. Um, just let okay. me know and I'll make sure I blur it out. Okay. If a password accidentally shows up or something like that. Yeah, give me a second. I, I'm in the account. I'm actually looking for some Toastmaster stuff. So I I was the vice president of public relations for a district. So basically it's three different county area. <laughs> so I'm pulling up these old emails from couple years ago mm. trying to find um yeah but there's one more thing actually i meant to touch on too and you were talking about sure. connecting social media um putting your events on social media right and, mm-hmm. and i think it's it, as many places as you can post this event so let's say you do it on twitter and then you put it on your social media you do it on email um the one thing i find that, that one because i do web development too and i see sometimes people will lead their Twitter to their Facebook event, which leads to their landing page on their website, right? And that's, you're taking them in a circle. I think one of the more important things is that you have that landing page and all posts, whether it's on social media, whether it's through email, um, whether it's a, a link that you've pasted into a postcard should all lead to the one landing page so that you can, one, track right. it, but also not confuse people. Because if you send me to Facebook and then from there I have to go somewhere else, you may, one, you may lose me. I may be confused on where to sign up. And, and two, I just may get bored of clicking so much. Um, so just make sure that all, kind of like all roads lead to Rome, like all those different signals that are coming to that event lead to one landing page. Um, and just make sure it's done that way. Right, absolutely. Right. So I've got so many, so many in here. It's like, okay, which one do I have to show you? And some of these are kind of old and the images are broken. So I'm like, okay, let me find. What account are we going into? Is this a constant contact that we're looking at? or? This is a constant contact, yeah. Okay, cool. So we get the back um, end of constant a, contact. Yeah, so this one. Yeah, so this one's just a simple reminder. Let me see. All right, so.
We are there. We go. There's a screen. Perfect. This okay, is your screen. All right. Okay. So like, so for example, this is one that did 2014, I think. So basically, it, it was just a hey. By the way, we've got a training coming up, and then here was just a simple reminder. Oh yeah. By the way, here's how to get there, and hey, by the way, here's how to um, RSVP. I don't know. probably can't get on the. So yeah, link to an event, right? Just like we were talking about. It's probably. Yeah, so they're, they're basically the landing page, um, although obviously it's ended, but mm -hmm. um, but when they could get it, there was this whole button and you can actually go and click on it and yeah, you can share it right there. There's a Twitter button oh, that you can right. share. So cool, let me kind of walk people through this real quick here. So what we're, we're looking at was a constant contact email template for a mm -hmm. newsletter that was announcing a event. And inside yes. that newsletter, or, there it is, is a, uh, it's a it's a free event, and it's a click. Basically, when you click on that, you would end up at Eventbrite, which was the landing page for the event. And right. that's one thing we also forgot to mention is that Eventbrite and your landing page for the event should have some way of sharing that event. So the, the Eventbrite one had a couple of social media links, so you could share it. Yeah, it's already built in. So there's nothing. Yeah, it was already it's already built in the landing page. What anything you had to do. Um, and another thing I did on this one, it's a click here to see the full calendar. So basically, not only we had the one event coming up, but it said, you know, if you can't get to this one, we've got more account, more events here. The calendar link, I don't think works anymore, but it was a couple of years ago. Um, right. That's a nice template. That, is that a template from a Constant Contact? Yeah, it was one I built. It was a custom template. I actually built that in Constant Contact. And so I um, took the website, which I designed that year. Um, when I was the public relations director for Toastmasters and basically went into constant contact and matched up the website, um, matched the images, matched the um, branding, matched all the colors. And that, that's something I offer to clients is that, okay, let me match your branding of your website, you know, whatever brand your website is, whatever yeah. images you have. That's important. That. That's important yeah. to remember that because that's the cool thing about these, whether you're using a free one or you're paying for one, they have these templates that really make your emails look professional. You can just look like a um, a newsletter with a sidebar, which was what um, what Carlos was just showing us. So there was two events announced in the main part of it, and on the right-hand side, there's a sidebar with other links, um, which right. was a, kind of a newsletter format. Um, but the important thing is to brand it like your website. Everything should be in like your Facebook. So those logos, those colors... Um, should be similar in your email as with your website, with even your landing page if you do Eventbrite. So you're branding all those so people don't think they just ended up on a totally different unrelated place. There's some type of visual cue that right. they're, they're still with the same organization, that it's still related. Yeah, so this one, like I said, these are kind of old, so I, um, the images aren't showing up anymore. They aren't in the account anymore. So this was kind of what we were just talking about. Early bird registration ends today. There's a quick reminder. The early bird price ends today. Here's a reminder where it is. Yeah, here's the two packages. And then, that, yeah, I, I created this one. The price will go up. Anyone who registered after April 11th, here's, yeah. And then we got the wonderful, yeah, here's who's coming. And then um, we dropped in this video. So we didn't really talk about that. But Constant Contact has right. its way to um, sync up with um, YouTube. And basically, you drop in the link to the YouTube video, and then it creates this nice little um, image of the video. And they can click on that and actually see the video we have yeah. of it. And then, right, and embed um, it right in there. Um, right, and then I'm making that reminder at the bottom. Oh, by the way, here's the list of speakers, and then that goes right to the website. And then click here to lock it in now. And so, and so nobody's offended. People are like, oh, thanks for letting me know, because, you know, let me know that the deadline's right now. Right. And then at the bottom, by the way, here's the hotel information. Right. Um, Let me uh, give a little bit so. of a visual overview of this for people who are just listening. Um, so again, we're in this. It's a templated uh, email, custom custom made by Carlos, but it uh, it has the logo up at the top, and then it has this is just for an event. It has event information on there, and it has a call to action about um, the hey the deadline's coming. Or actually, it's not a deadline. Well, it's a deadline, I guess, in some sense that you are going to lose your discount if you don't do this soon. Um, right. And then down below, it gets information about the speakers. Has an embedded video in there, so you can actually watch this. Most mailing clients, I'm, Gmail does, I'm sure Outlook does. You can actually just click on the video and watch it without leaving your email. Um, right. And so that it's embedded in there. And then down below is the hotel information. So this is in itself is almost a mini landing page 
for the conference um, with all the links going to the registration and the hotel information. Right. I, I think if I did this today, I would break it out a little bit because I, you know, I had the, the one message here of here's the promotion. And yeah, I've been doing this so long, you know, things change. We all change. Um, and then down here was the hotel deadline. So, I mean, that could really be two emails. You know, maybe the first email is early bird registration ends today. And then three days later, the next email is hotel re hotel deadline extend. The next email is silent auction request. Um, so I have all those in one email, but you can definitely break this up. And especially nowadays, uh, I've been advising clients to break them up more and more. Mm -hmm. And I changed my personal pricing. Now I, I basically do a, a one stop price where basically I do all your emails for one price because what I, what I found is that the shorter emails tend to get more conversions. And if you can send uh, email more often, but a shorter message, it, just with the way people are and attention spans and that type of thing, it really works mm -hmm. better. Right. Yeah. And and what do you what about your here's here's a good one the headings the headlines the, uh, um, the subject line yeah the subject line for those how are you do you spend a lot of time thinking about that are you doing anything specific to try to get people to actually click in and read these I really just start thinking of stuff and think about what would make me open it and oftentimes just to guess you know it's. It, it's a guessing game. Sometimes people are like, wow, that was a real clever headline. I'm like, yeah, I just, I guessed. <laughs> yeah. There are books you can get. There's a book I have over here. I will find this book. Hold on. I have to find it. Ah, oh, here it is. Hold on. Give me a sec. Yeah, there's a, there's a uh, book I read. I can't remember the author, but they, oh, wait a minute. It, it'll come to me in a second. But they were talking about, how they will sometimes spend as much time creating the headline for blog posts as they will writing the blog just to make sure. Yeah, that it's, I've, uh, I've heard that too. I, I'm not quite that crazy or anything. Yeah, I don't that. spend I just, that time either. <laughs> yeah, but this book, Web Copy That Sales, Maria Veloso wrote it. I've had this book for several years, but there's a whole chapter about that kind of stuff in there. So. Uh, I'll consult it every so often, but. Usually, I just really use common sense of what would get me to open it. What, what do I think that people would read? Cool. So, Some tools will let you will let you A/B test that kind of stuff, and I don't do that kind of thing as much as I should. Uh -huh. But you know, some service providers will let you say, "Okay, email one, version one has this headline, version two has that headline," and you just roll with it. Um, I don't use those tools as much as I could, or as much as I should, but you can yeah. do that. Yeah, I don't do AB a lot either. Um, hey, right. since we are in constant contact, why don't you take us, kind of show us the the kind of my campaigns area. Show us what it looks like. This is similar for all of them. We're not trying to promote one over the other. Like I said, I'm using AWeber now and I used to use MailChimp and uh, mm -hmm. you've, you're you actually using two now, but it's a good example of what it looks like, right. what you might get if you actually have a, a, a mailing client. Can you take us to the kind of the campaign area that shows us some of those stats and the information that's going to help us? Sure. So like how to create a new campaign or, or more the reporting? Uh, maybe the reporting at this point. Um, okay. Yeah, I think it, just the idea that, the, hey, someone opened my email and if they clicked it and how they clicked it and, and what, what information we know. Because if you blindly send from Outlook uh, an email list where everyone's blind carbon copied, please folks don't do that, um, you get nothing. You get no information on who, who opened it, who read it, um, or anything right. like that. And so here, yeah, like this. Here we have an idea of um, the percent of people who open and click. You want to walk us through a little bit of this? Absolutely. So, so this one said September, February 2014. Um, and here, just because it's kind of an older email, it's not showing the, the screen share. But on the newer emails, you going to show like a screenshot of the actual email itself. And so 27% of people open it. So that's pretty good. Uh, yeah, because they know, like, and trust me. That's pretty strong and then 9% clicked on it and you can click on this and it'll actually show you the names of the people who actually opened it. Mm -hmm. And so, and so, um, so what we were looking at was a list of emails that were sent and it's, it's, um, let, it let us know how many people on the list opened it as a percent and how many people actually clicked any of the links that were within it as a percent. Right. An open rate of 30%, that's pretty good, actually, isn't it? It's what's, you know, what yeah, that? that's pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty, it's par for course. Yeah, so, yeah, so, and it'll even give you industry averages. So basically what you can do um, over here is you can select an industry. So my average in this account um, was 32%, 27% open. So pretty good. And it gives you a little tips on how to increase that. And then 
Um, if you select the industry, which looks like we never dealt with this account, it'll tell you, okay, here's how it compares to your, to your peers um, with a similar type of business. Right. And you can actually go down there and you can actually look at all the different people on the list. And you, if you click here, you can actually look and see, okay, this person opened this many emails that we have. Right. Yeah. And I know MailChimp does a, um, actually gives you like star ratings for, for people. So like oh, if cool. you have a person on your mailing list that opens a lot, they become like a four star member. Oh, and someone who star. never opens, it becomes a two star member. Cause every so often, um, I've done this only once so far, but you end up purging your list a little bit because there's just people who never leave your list. And all of a sudden you're sending out right. thousands of emails and, um, you get a low open rate because someone's been on there for five years and never left. Exactly. Yeah. And another tool is, you know, constant contact doesn't really have that many good purge tools in active campaign. I, I use something similar where basically if they don't open it for a certain period of time, I can do an automation and take them up that way. Um, and with the higher level accounts, you can do basically what's called lead scoring, which does something very similar, but you have to, well, lead scoring, you have to basically program that in that basically, you say, okay, if they open it, it's more of a point system and a little more customized. We're basically, okay, if they open the email, give them one point. If they click on it, give them three points. If they oh, do this, right. they give them 10 points. Um, right. And, you know, for more of a for profit business, that's really good because then you can figure out, okay, this guy's really interactive with my emails. You know, he's probably going to buy something from me. Let's just give him a call and see if we can close yeah. that deal. Yeah. Or you can say, um, like we were talking before, or we talked a little bit about segmenting lists. So you can segment a list to people who open them the most. And maybe pitch them right. some type of, hey, you're just a really good follower and we're going to do something right. special for you. Here's a special offer just for you or um, a special thank right. you. Um, right. So in Constant Contact, you can do some of that stuff. It's much more of a manual process. You you can tag them and stuff, but it's much more on your own. In an active campaign, you can create what's called an automation mm -hmm. um, and basically says, okay, if they open this email, this email, this email, we're going to put this tag on them and then send the email that way. But it's, but you have to create the tag. You have to create that automation. Right. You know, that maybe that's a, a good way to kind of wrap up because we're kind of running out of time. But I think the idea of, and we can hop off this screen if you want, or we can actually, unless you want to show us tagging and how that would work. But but you mentioned something. Here, Here's a, let's say you have a mailing list of 500 people or 1,000 mm -hmm. people and you send out your email and, the ones who let's say it's for an event, they go to an event, so they have um they've done an action. You have that. You can tag those people, and then be able to use them in a separate list. Like all the people that went to this event get tagged as event goer, um, event goer, fundraising event goer, and then you oh, can absolutely. take that list and do some type of thank you or some type of just that way. If I if I'm understanding segmented list. That way, when you send the thank you, the personal thank you for coming to the event, you're not sending it to the whole list where half of them didn't go to the event. You segmented right. the list to only people who've gone to it. And so when oh, you yeah, send the thank absolutely. you or the follow-ups or here's a video of the whatever special thing you want to give them, then you're right. only sending to them. Um, In Kazakata, you can do that. It's more of a manual process. So what you can do is basically download your event list and then upload it back up. Um, I don't know if there's many tags in this particular account. On my active campaign account, oh my gosh, it's like tons and tons of tags. This is insane. So like if you look over here, you know, like I said, active campaign is a little more sophisticated in terms of what you can do with it, the functionality. Um, once it loads. Well, I like that it gives you a subdomain. Yeah. So we're loading up a different application. This is active, cam active campaign, correct? Um, yeah, that's correct. And so they have a tagging system in here that allows you to tag your content. Aweber does the same thing. I just started using it. I have, I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to use it, but uh, but I realized that when people sign up for a mailing list I, or, or a certain event or wh whatever action that they do, you can tag them with certain things. Like we were just saying. Um, right. So, so for example, right here, um, this first person, we got her name, her email address, and then tag. <clears throat> so I created a, a confirmation tag. So the confirmation tag basically says, in the six, first 60 days, they've opened at least one email from me. If they don't open at least one email in 60 days, I boot them off because they used a fake email and you know, they're never going to open anything. Right. Um, or they're trying to get. And then I got this. Yeah. Right. Um, and then I've got like this local versus not local. 
And so I'm in Ohio. So this person is Springfield, Ohio, which is local enough. This person's in California. And so I've got tags for that. Engaged is basically kind of a tagging version of what you were talking about, the star system. Um, I have an automation that basically shows how often they open the email and if the show is engaged versus disengaged. And then if at those times when I want to purge the list a little bit, get the get the open rates up, then I'll look at who's disengaged and take those people off. Right. And the yeah. waiting tag that, that kind of goes along with the engagement, that's just part of that um, particular automation. It's just the way they tag it. Yeah. Um, so nothing really there. Another um, good use of tags would be funding. Uh, yeah. So, so for donator, example, I have, person who donated could become tagged when they donate. And right. then you could have a list of people who actually donated. Right. right. Um, and then I have other tags like this one person has this tag for email course. So I create a, a landing page with a, a um, opt-in form. And my 30 days email marketing success course is on my website. Now. It's on the home page. And so this person um, opted in and, and is doing that training. And instead of creating a separate list, I have her just tagged as that email course. And um, with that automation, I, I put the put her into that sort of sequence. Um, and then this person over here, um, has a tag called Vault, and there was another um, free download I did, which is called the Mr. Lee's Vault, I think it's what I called it, um, where I gave away some free webinars and some other things that I had created over all this old content I had. Um, I basically put it all on one web page and said, well, to get the content, you have to subscribe to the Mr. Lee's Vault. Um, and so I <clears throat> created a tag called Vault and did it that way. Um, and then there's one here called Trialers, where basically the person was did the free trial for um, an active campaign account. And so to, to keep up with them and, and to remind myself and also to send him follow-up emails, um, I use that trialers tag. So basically, um, I can create a whole separate sequence for the trialers, you know, because obviously he, the information I need to send him is different than the information I send to just the general list. Like, okay, right. hey, you know, here's, I'm so glad you took the free trial. You know, here's what to expect. And hey, have you seen this? And hey, let me send you the training videos. And hey, um, let me send you to the webinar and blah, 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 blah. And hey, here's how to get some help and all that kind right. of stuff. Uh, so you definitely, his content would be different than someone else's content. You right. definitely don't want stuff going out. And so, so yeah, definitely your um, trialers or your non trialers. And then um, this one right here, this queen thing. So I had like this card trick. So basically, Active Campaign has all these just really sophisticated things. And so I created like basically a card trick where basically, if you get on my website, it'll say, um, uh, it's not on the homepage anymore. It used to be on the homepage. You basically, it's like pick a card and you click on maybe the ace and then pick a suit and you'd say maybe diamonds. And then I would send an email to you five minutes later. It says, is this your card? And the email would have a picture of the card you picked on the website. Mm. And that's kind of the back end way of, of how I did it. And, and the whole point of it is it doesn't matter what the card is. The whole point of it is showing you the power of marketing automation, the power of creating these customized emails where um, you're using tagging to um, change the content itself right. on the email. Right. Let me um, give so a people like, wow, quick that's description crazy. here for yeah. people. Um, but but I, I, th I think I forgot to do this at the beginning. But we're looking at a list of people, um, names and emails. I'll blur out the emails when I post this. Um, but yeah. in the very middle is just a list of everything that they're tagged for. So if they are a local person, they're tagged local. If they're not local, they're tagged not local. If they are... Um, part of a, a, a program, then they're, they're, they're um, listed in that program. So there's all sorts of things here. And so this is one thing I think to keep in mind is as you start using email and you start using your list, you start really using your list. You got, you, I remember a while ago, I was talking to a fundraiser. He's just like, you got to work your list. You got to work your list. And as right. you do that, you're going to end up with just multiple lists. You have a, a list of donors. You have a list of volunteers. You'll have a list of people taking a program. You have a list of people who are um, on the, well, of course you have your board list, but, but like all these lists will just kind of go on and they'll grow and you'll, and you'll, and you'll use them in different ways. That way you just don't send one email that's for volunteers, but you have to send it to everybody or, right. um, well, cool. Um, well, cool. You can, you can stop sharing your screen right now if you like. We'll just go back to the regular, okay. regular one. Um, I think we'll wrap up here. You mentioned a lot of things about your site and the things that you're offering. So tell us a little more about that. And uh, I'll make sure it gets sure. linked in the show notes for us so that make people know how to contact you and uh, and what's available. Absolutely. Um, so my business is called Mr. Leads, and I'm a email marketing specialist specializing in active campaign and constant contacts. Surprise, surprise, since that's what we just looked at. 
Um, I use just those two products. I don't use uh, MailChimp. I don't use um, all the other tools out there. I really decided to specialize just in the two because with all the different products out there, if you try to learn everything, you'll end up not being great at anything. And so those are the two I use. And so if you're a current customer, want to be a customer of Active Campaign or Cost of Contact and need help with that, I'm the guy to talk to. Um, the way I work a little bit differently, which we already kind of talked about a little bit, is I basically do unlimited email campaigns for one set price. And the reason for that is, as we talked about before, is that oftentimes people try to jam all this information into one email so they can just pay one low price and it doesn't get them good results. And, and so now I do one-stop pricing. Um, $249 a month is the base price um, with minimal um, cons- consultation, consultation and advice for me. Or if you need unlimited consultations, $499 a month. Um, month to month, no contract. Um, my website, mr-leads.com, has all the information. Um, and it's called the Concierge Program. So if you go to that website, click on the services page, it'll take you right to the sales page. has every single question you could ever think of and a few you hadn't thought of. And um, feel free to call me if you have any questions regarding my packages. Um, that number is 937 572 3713. Also, on my website, on the homepage, I have um, a free training called 30 Days Email Marketing Success. Um, it's a step by step process of how to create an email list, um, all the way from deciding what kind of content to create, how to hire writers, um, if you need to hire writers, uh, what's good, what's bad. Um, all the things we talked about, about building a list on, you know, can't spam laws, all that stuff. And so if you don't have an email list yet and are really in the early stages, I definitely recommend you take that training if you want to hire me because, you know, the, the hiring process makes a lot more sense if you take a training and you have that knowledge in advance. Yeah, then but, you're you know, speaking you the same language. List, yeah, exactly. You're speaking the same language. You know, if you already have a list and want to just offload it, I work with a lot of nonprofits because what I found is they're understaffed. You know, you either send it to the staff member that sends one email a month and doesn't remember how to log in, or maybe you're doing it yourself and don't remember how to log in and just too frazzled and and don't want to train somebody. You just hand it off to me. Just hand me the content and I roll with it. Yeah, and that's yeah, that's great. That's how I work. It's amazing that the 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 technology and the way that the web is involved and things like that that the careers are being made all the time for things like that because they're needed it's cool i actually right. while you spoke the whole time i've uh you you can't tell because i'm not sharing my screen but your website is up right now so um oh, people cool. as you describe stuff um your site's been up here so that people can see it and there is right here on the very front page click here to sign up it's a 30-day free email marketing training course so um yes definitely folks head on over there uh, you can't pass up that deal. And then um, if you need any help, you can give him a call. His click the call. It looks like right here at the top. You just click on there and you can and give Carlos a call. Yeah. All right, man. Hey, but that was great. That was a lot of information. Um, I really appreciate you being available and making sure we connected. Um, oh, thanks yeah. for inviting me. I appreciate it. Yeah. Any last uh, tips for people trying to get an email campaign started? Um, get this book, Web Copy That Sells, Maria Belusu. Are we back on camera? Can you see me now? Yeah, yeah, you can show that up there. Uh, okay, there it is. Web copy on that Amazon. sells. Um, you got to hold that yeah. up longer than that. That was too sh- Oh, I'm blue. sorry. Web copy that is- sells. I'll put a link to that on our on our site. Right. Um, that, that, that's Good just one. writing tips, right? Copywriting tips. Copywriting tips. Uh, there's another guy, Ray Howard. I've got books like all on the side over here. So I'm looking over at my book. Oh, it's right here. Okay, come on. <laughs> another good one. Web copy, how to write copy that sells by Ray Edwards is another good one too. There you go. So, cool. So two books to read. Yeah, that's Great important stuff. stuff though. And they actually, you can use that stuff for your web copy too, not just your emails. Mm-hmm. When you write your Absolutely. homepage, your about page and your services page, that stuff's right. invaluable. Right. Hey, Carlos, thanks so much again for being on the program. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. Well, I hope you liked that video, and if you did, please give the video a thumbs up down below, and also subscribe to us if you're not already a subscriber to the channel. Over on the left, you can also see there are a couple videos that you may like to watch, other webcasts, other courses, and other programs offered by Nonprofit Ally. Thanks so much for watching, folks.